Here's a console you probably haven't thought about in three years, the Wii U. It may have been the stepping stone for the Nintendo Switch, but beyond that, its impact was limited. Selling just shy of 14 million units, the Wii U is arguably the worst performing console from Nintendo in 20 years. It lacked games, lacked developer support, and lacked a reason for people to get excited about it. The Wii U was even discontinued before the Switch even launched. So what happened? Today on Game Files, let's take a look back on the Wii U to see what caused it to implode. And to do that, we have to go back to the era of the Wii. Remember the Wii? Of course you do. It was the most successful console of its generation. It brought on millions of new customers who never played video games before. It revolutionized motion controls. It had kick-ass games. It sold well north of 100 million units. The Wii was Nintendo's biggest success story in a decade. The Wii garnered a reputation for being too casual with not enough games to entice so-called core gamers. And the most popular games were always Nintendo-developed titles that took advantage of motion controls. So in the late 2000s, Nintendo went to work on the Wii's successor. Designers quickly hit upon a touchscreen controller as the biggest new addition, though they also wanted HD graphics and continued motion controls. Rumors around this console swirled for years, until it was finally announced at E3 2011. No games were announced at the time, as the focus was on the controller. It had a 6-inch touchscreen, a camera, and rechargeable battery. But throughout the presentation, only the controller was shown. At no point was the console itself seen. And herein lies the Wii U's big problem. Unless you were a gaming enthusiast, it was unclear whether the Wii U was a new console or simply a new controller for the Wii. The console's marketing caused a lot of confusion, to the point where Nintendo admitted they screwed up a few months before it launched. But there's no do-overs in marketing. With one shot to showcase their console, Nintendo blew it and they had to keep going. And so, in November 2012, the Wii U launched in North America and Europe, followed by Japan a few weeks later. How successful was the launch? Well, when the Wii launched in 2006, it sold over 430,000 copies in the United States in the holiday season. By comparison, the Wii U sold 57,000 consoles in the 2012 holiday season. That's just 13% of the Wii's sales. The Wii U was a dead console, walking just six weeks after its original launch. Not that Nintendo threw it out immediately. A steady stream of first-party games were released for the Wii U, at least in the first couple of years. Splatoon was Nintendo's first new IP in years, and it proved successful enough to warrant a sequel. Re-releases of Zelda games also kept sales afloat. And the Wii U's biggest title was Super Smash Bros. 4, which increased console sales to their highest level ever when it was released in December 2014. Yet it wasn't enough. Third-party publishers like EA and Ubisoft quickly stopped developing games for the struggling system. With each passing E3, the Wii U's lineup of games dwindled. And when rumors of a new Nintendo console were on the horizon just three years after the Wii U's launch, it was the beginning of the end. Its successor, the Nintendo Switch, learned plenty of lessons from the Wii U. Marketing was focused on the console itself, which had a similar tablet-like design as the Wii U's controller and it had a flagship title, in this case, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, to launch the system with. As of June 2020, the Switch has sold over 61 million units worldwide. It couldn't have done so without the failures of the Wii U, which means that, in a way, the Wii U's greatest legacy is the console that came after it. And if that's not an indictment of how bad Nintendo handled the Wii U, I don't know what is. From its debut until it finally discontinued a month before the launch of the Switch, the Wii U struggled to capture the attention of anyone. Perhaps in a few years, we'll grow nostalgic for it. But for now, it will stand as the most important mistake Nintendo has made in recent history.